Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black Drago control deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and the deck is built around Torrential Gearhulk, the 6-mana 5-6 artifact creature construct from Kaladesh Remastered. It has Flash so we can play it at instant speed and when Gearhulk enters a battlefield we can cast target instant card from our graveyard without paying its mana cost and then exile it afterwards. So Torrential Gearhulk is the main win condition in the deck and the deck is also built to fully leverage the Gearhulk by including plenty of instant for us to get back. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got the full playset of Fatal Push, another inclusion from Kaladesh Remastered. Can destroy a creature with converted mana cost 2 or less, and if we enabled Revolt, kill a creature with converted mana cost 4 or less. And we've got a few ways of easily enabling Revolt, mainly with Fabled Passage going to the graveyard, or by sacrificing a Mind Stone. Then we also have two copies of Opt to scry one and to draw a card. Because we're playing this deck in best of one, I made sure to include plenty of one-offs that could be useful in certain situations. So by having a few cheap card draw spells like Opt, we can find those silver bullets more consistently. And then going over our one-offs, we've got a ton of counter spells, with Sensor countering a spell unless its controller pays one, can also cycle it for one blue mana in the late game, Disdainful Stroke counters a spell with converted mana cost 4 or greater, Essence Scatter counters a creature spell, Negate counters a non-creature spell, and Tails End counters an activated ability, triggered ability, or legendary spell. And then we also have Search for Ascanta, which is an enchantment that can put a card in our graveyard each turn, and at some point transforms into Ascanta the Sunken Ruin, which is a legendary land we can activate to find more non-creature spells, so it can provide a ton of card advantage as well. And then we've got some more removal, with Heartless Act killing a creature without a counter on it, and Moment of Craving giving a creature minus two minus two, as well as gaining two life, so great against any red decks. And then we have the full playset of Mind Stone, which can help us ramp towards Torrential Gearhulk, and it's also an artifact we can discard to Thirst for Knowledge, which is our next card, a three mana instant that lets us draw three, and then discard two cards unless we discard an artifact card. So in the early game we might have multiple copies of Gearhulk in hand, so we can discard one of those, or in the late game we might draw into a Mind Stone which we no longer need and we can simply discard that one as well. Or in some matchups, let's say the opponent's playing a more controlling deck where they don't have a lot of creatures for us to kill, we can simply discard some of our removal spells and keep more counter spells instead. Then we also have two copies of Disallow as our three mana counter spell of choice, which counters a spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. So being able to counter an activated or triggered ability does come up. If the opponent has a Planeswalker in play, they're about to ultimate, we can counter it, and then the opponent's Planeswalker might be gone, and we don't have to worry about the ultimate. We can maybe counter an Aetherworks Marvel activation after the opponent already spent six energy using the Aetherworks Marvel. So there's plenty of situations where the ability to counter an activated or triggered ability comes up, and that's why we're playing it over the other three mana options. And then we also have two copies of Narset, Part of Veils, which can provide a bit of card advantage with the minus two, helping us look for any non-creature spells in the top four cards, and also has a passive ability, saying each opponent cannot draw more than one card each turn. And Narset is also a pretty nasty combo with Commit Memory. Commits a four mana instant that puts target's spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top. So it's a pseudo counter spell and a pseudo removal spell. But we also get Memory, which is the aftermath half of Commit. So if this is in our graveyard, we can cast Memory for 6 mana, and then each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and then draws 7 cards. So if we cast Memory with a Narset in play, the opponent will only draw 1 card after shuffling their hand back into their library, whereas we still get to draw 7, so that's a powerful combo. And another interesting rules interaction also allows us to cast Memory with Torrential Gearhulk, even though Memory is a sorcery. Because the Commit half of Commit Memory is an instant, we can target it with Torrential Gearhulk, and then it also gives us the option of casting the memory half, so we can potentially play memory during the opponent's turn at instant speed. So if we also happen to have a Narset in play, the opponent doesn't get to draw any additional cards from memory, so that's a pretty mean combo we can try and pull off. And then we have two copies of Extinction Event as our sweeper of choice, as well as two copies of Vraska's Contempt, which exiles a creature or planeswalker, and we also get to gain two life, so that incidental life gain definitely adds up once we get to flash it back with Torrential Gearhulk. And you might be wondering, are four copies of Gearhulk enough as a win condition? And the answer is yes, because we have two copies of Commit Memory as well, so at some point if the Gearhulk is in our graveyard, we can play Memory, and then reshuffle those Gearhulks back into the deck, and eventually we'll run the opponent out of answers. And then we 
we also have one copy of Crawling Barons in the mana base, which can double up as a win condition, and also makes for a nice mana sink. If we have four spare mana, we can put two plus one plus one counters on it, without having to turn it into a creature yet. And then we've got our four copies of Fabled Passage, great for enabling Revolt, as well as four Watery Grave, and two copies of Fended Pools, which all count as islands and swamps for our Drowned Canacomb. And Fended Pools we can also cycle for two mana for flooding out, then our four copies of Drowned Canacomb, four of the Blue-Black Pathway, and then a couple basics to fetch up with Fabled Passage, three Swamps, and three Islands, as well as one Castle Ventress, as another nice mana sink. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine looking hand. Some cheap removal, cheap interaction, and search for Ascanta to find more card draw effects and eventually turn into the Sunken Ruin. Turn one Siren Storm Tamer. Yeah, I guess um, I'll keep a Fatal Push here. I could kill it right now, in case they go Curious Obsession and have a Dive Down as protection. I'll wait, and then hopefully if they go for Curious Obsession we can punish them. And we'll take one. Opponent passes, I'll kill the Storm Tamer anyway. And then I'll shock myself to keep up Sensor and Negate. And then next turn I could maybe go Mind Stone and still keep up one of my two mana spells. Cutthroat, I'll Sensor. So this could be a tough matchup because my opponent can also play at instant speed. So they can play stuff in our end step, making it more difficult for us to predict what we should do. So for now, I guess we can go Mindstone into either Keep Up Negate or tap out for Search for Ascanta. Or we can cycle the Feathered Pools, I think we'll pass. And then next turn play Search. Spectral Sailor end of turn, can also provide card advantage. So if they try and play Curious Obsession, we can negate it. Curiosity. All negates. Could see a counter spell in return. Alright, that happened. And they had a Curious Obsession as well. So had they gone for the Curious Obsession or Curiosity on turn 2, we could have punished them, since it doesn't look like they had a way to protect their creature. Alright, commit can bound Spectral Sailor, and I should probably just do it now. Brazen Borrower bounces Mindstone, sure. And then, yeah, I guess we'll play the Fetid Pools tapped here. We'll need 6 mana if we ever want to cast Memory. Main phase Brazen Borrower to play around a counter spell. And Fabled Passage to draw. So can get Search for Ascanta in play. And Fabled Passage also means we get an extra card in Graveyard to uh, transform Ascanta sooner. So if I put Fabled Passage in the Graveyard, Ascanta needs 7 cards total, so I wouldn't get there quite yet. So for now we'll just play a tapped Watery Grave. Don't want to take any unnecessary damage, even if it means maybe not representing a counter spell. Another curiosity. All right, let's see if we can find removal. A gear hulk would also be great. Thirst for knowledge. That's got to be good enough. And then Fabled Passage can also enable Revolt for what it's worth. And gets countered. Alright, so next turn we get to flip Ascanta. 
and then hopefully we can uh, find some more removal. So I want to upkeep, sack Fable Passage. So I still have Revolt enabled for the turn. Get a Swamp. And put that in the graveyard. And Fatal Push. So... I could Fatal Push first, so we can pay for Lofty Denial. And then still use Ascant afterwards. Could also decide to cast Memory, but that seems unnecessary here. And then we'll just pass. Opponent's gonna activate Sailor, so I guess we'll Ascant and Response. And then if I find another Fatal Push, I can kill it. As the Scatter seems better than Mindstone at this point. So they've got a Spectral Sailor as their card draw engine, we've got a Search for Ascanta. I think I keep Mindstone in place since with Ascanta we're pretty mana hungry. So I could use the extra mana. Moment of Cravings, perfect. So... I guess we'll wait for them to activate Sailor once again. But I do want to probably kill it before they get to untap. Sailor down. Now Ascanta cannot find Gearhulk, so that's one of the downsides. But it does find card draw spells which can find Gearhulk. Siren Storm Tamer. I kind of want to Essence Scatter, because it's going to make future removal spells awkward. And then we can still end of turn activate Ascanta. Opponent passes. Find a Contempt, Gearhulk goes to the bottom, and a Disallow, alright. Let's pass the turn. Brazen Borrower. I think I would rather Contempt end of turn here. That works. They could have a Lofty Denial in hand, which we could have just paid for. Our life total is going back up a little bit. Terramander is kind of scary. So I could Disallow or I could activate Ascanta. I think I'm gonna activate Ascanta. They also don't have very many instants in their graveyard, so it's still pretty pricey for them to adapt. Find a Heartless Act. So this could be awkward against the Terramander if they adapt it, but let's count here. They've got five mana, so they wouldn't be able to adapt in response. So I think we'll just main phase kill it before they get a chance to adapt. And then we're slowly out grinding our opponent here with Ascanta. Lofty Denial, I'll pay for.
Spell Pierce, I guess I'll pay for. And another Spell Pierce. Alright, my opponent's empty handed. They can adapt Terramander in their turn, but Fatal Push has it covered. So let's just kill it right away. Play Mindstone. And now we're in cruise control. Find probably not their fatal push. And there's a Gear Hulk, so we can start closing out the game. Don't want the Gear Hulk to get countered, so I would like Disallow backup, which I do have the mana for here. We can Gear Hulk and still have three mana for Disallow to counter a potential counter spell. Opponent keeps two cards on top. And then end of turn we'll Gear Hulk. And we can get back Thirst for Knowledge. Opponent plays Sailor, that's fine. Now we can just kill the Sailor instead. Essence Capture will disallow. They can still activate Sailor to get one extra card, I guess. So maybe it's better to Thirst and then just Fatal Push the Sailor instead. Could also go for memory, but it doesn't seem necessary when we have Ascanta and the opponent's empty-handed. And my opponent explodes. Alright, so pretty back and forth game here against the blue flash deck. But yeah, we outflashed the flash deck thanks to Search for Ascanta. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Probably going to play a tapped watery grave. And then hope we draw another land, so Fable Passage is a turn 4 land. Opponent with Radiant Fountain, so this is the uh, Colorless Ramp deck. So I could uh, play Watery Grave to keep up Sensor for next turn to counter an opposing Mind Stone or Guardian Idol. I think I'm gonna have to just play my own Mind Stone to guarantee Thirst for Knowledge next turn. Fatal Push not gonna be very useful in the matchup. Opponent's got their own Mind Stone. And then we can get rid of double Fatal Push with Thirsts if we don't need to censor an important 4 mana play. Alright, Hedron Archive is a bit too juicy not to counter. And then we'll fetch to get a land here since it's still tapped. Narset could be good, but I also need to hit my land drops, so I think we got a main phase thirsts. And then discard fatal push times two. And play land. Contempt can exile a planeswalker. Opponent is on the paradox engine version, as we draw yet another fatal push. Well, uh, time to get Narset out there. Finds an opt. And we can thirst again end of turn, or I could opt in the hopes of finding a two mana counter spell if it's absolutely necessary. If her opponent plays a Mystic Forge, I'll have to dig for a counter spell here. It's gonna level up a Blast Zone instead to deal with Narset, presumably. Alright, end of turn, still probably casting Thirst. And then get rid of Fatal Push and maybe Opt. Commit is pretty useful since it can also bounce the Paradox Engine. Contempt could be useful if they have Karn. Or I can just get rid of Contempt and hope to find more counter spells instead. Yeah, I can buy that. And then for now, activate Narsets, find another commit. I mean, I don't need to commit Paradox Engine just yet, since it doesn't do a whole lot. 
So how about we play Ascanta and then just uh, pass a turn and then I can commit a Mystic Forge if they play it. Buried Rune can get back, Hedron Archive. Yep. So, could also try and set up the uh, memory with Narsad in play, which I'm not hating here. So that means I could commit Paradox Engine right now. So they still have three mana. And the Zaneful Stroke seems great. Ascanta transforms. So do we go for the memory play? I don't hate it. So let me fetch first. And hope to draw into a couple counter spells here. Found a negate, perfect. Opponents got one card. Forsaken Monument is gonna get negated. And then Torrential Gearhulk negates, quite powerful too here. Back up Narset, why not? Don't have many basics left at this point. And my opponent concedes. Alright. Managed to pull off the Narset plus memory play against Colorless Ramp. And yeah, I mean, taking a look at our opening hand, we had double Fatal Push, which is a dead card in the matchup. So being able to get rid of it with Thirst for Knowledge and find relevant cards was quite nice. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Of course, being on the draw potentially makes this a bad hand if my opponent's off to a quick start, which they are with a turn on Firebrand, as we'll have a bunch of reactive cards and no actual spot removal. So down to 18 we go, and luckily no turn to play, so now we get to keep up Negate and Essence Scatter. And then we just want to hit our land drops and get to a Gear Hulk as soon as possible. Snoop, alright, so my opponent's playing Goblins. Yeah, I mean I'll scatter the Snoop, which can provide card advantage. And then we still have Disallow for Muxus or Krenko. Negate's gonna be a death card. So if we find Thirst, we want to discard it. Yeah, I think I gotta keep up uh, Disallow here. Krenko would be a little too scary if that shows up. Prospector they can have. Yeah, Disallow probably gonna be capped for Krenko, Moxus, maybe Chieftain. Next turn I can play Ascanta and still keep up Disallow. Matron, I mean, I guess Matron's gonna find whatever I counter next, so might as well counter the Matron itself. But I want them to spend six mana on Moxus if that's what they want to search. So I think they can have the 1-1. One, one. So purely in terms of card advantage, countering the Matron makes sense. But it does make them spend three more mana, which I think is fine by me, because that gives us more time to get to Torrential Gearhulk. Now we'll play Ascanta. And I'll probably have to counter the Chieftain here. And then uh, 
Yeah, if we find a land, we can have Gearhawk for their next play. And then a 5-6 blocker will play defense nicely. Shame Whirler is fine. They could still play Chieftain afterwards, but they don't. So I guess we'll uh, still just take three here. And then end of turn we can opt. And then we're just looking for a land. That'll do. And Fatal Push. Don't have a great way to enable Revolt at the moment. I'll put that in the graveyard. All right, Fabled Passage would have been away. So it's interesting whether I play the Fabled Passage here or not. I guess I do. And then I can Gearhawk Fatal Push instead of Disallow. I guess it gives him one more mana with Prospector potentially by killing the creature instead of countering it. I want to keep Disallow for Muxus, obviously. All right, goes for Chieftain. So I guess we wait until beginning of combats. And then let them attack. And then I'll fetch. Enables revolts. Play Gearhawk. And get back Fatal Push. Kill Chieftain. And then I could block Chain Whirler if they have a Jump Helm. Alright, Jump Helm deals 5. Not enough to kill Gear Hulk, luckily. So I don't want to block Chain Whirler now, so I guess we'll block Prospector. Do they have a second Jump Helm? It's going to force them to sack two more creatures, and then I can still Fatal Push the Chieftain here, so... Don't know if this is actually a good play by them. They maybe should have waited to see what I targeted with Fatal Push and then sacrifice that creature to the Prospector to make mana. Commit Memory on top. Um, don't think I need to keep that. Put that in the graveyard for now. And then we've got another Gearhawk lined up. Can flash back Assa Scatter if they go for Muxus. Instigator's fine. And a War Chief. Alright, so I guess Gear Hulk Assa Scatter's fine now. And then with the remaining mana, they can't do anything too scary. Probably cycling sensor because it's not very effective with Prospector in play. So even with a jump palm, they don't have a great attack. Because it would have to sacrifice two goblins and then only deal two, and then three from Chain Whirler is not enough to kill Gearhulk. A Legion Warboss instead. Alright. That's fine. Well, that's an easy block. Cycle Sensor. At this point I could have kept Sensor because my opponent doesn't have Prospector anymore. But we've got Disallow to cover Muxus. And then uh, play Fabled Passage. Pass a turn, can also activate Crawling Barons as an extra blocker. A war chief. Do we counter war chief? I don't think I do. I 
Activate Barons. And then go to Blocks. And then I can still uh, pump up the Crawling Barons once again. So we're at two. And then uh, finding a bit of life gain would be nice, but I think we're doing fine here. Can also turn the corner pretty quickly. Now that uh, Crawling Barons already has two counters. Crater Maker. Interesting. Destroys a colorless non-land permanent, but Gear Hulk is blue. And only two damage to a creature, so I think that's fine. Can't even destroy my Crawling Barons, because it's a land. Opponent attacks. Activate Barons. And then I can still use Ascanta. And I'll have Negate up in case they somehow have a shock in their deck, which I doubt. Thirst for Knowledge can discard Negates. Is it time to start attacking yet? I'll wait one more turn. And we should pretty much have every scenario covered. Six mana, is it time for Muxus? At long last. Yep. I guess I can ask Kanta first. Tails ends, that'll do. And then I can thirst get rid of that negate. And probably don't need extinction events. And then we can start closing out the game here. So this is 13. Can counter their next play. And next turn they should be dead. Alright, sweet. So yeah, close one here against goblins. Needed every point of life to get there in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, fine opening hands. Opponent with a tap to watery grave. I guess I'll just Fabled Passage for now. And a Thought Erasure. Alright, probably takes my search for Ascanta. Which they might not be able to beat in a long game. Takes a Tail's End instead, interesting. Get a Swamp. And then I think I just want to resolve Ascanta. Aha, so it's a Planeswalker control deck with a Jace Mirror Mage. Explains why they took the Tails End. A nice day for an expedition. Negate seems good. So we can play... Mindstone, keep up negate. And opt end of turn if we don't have to negate. Jace draws a land for free. And to ferry we will negate. Sensor. Eh, I probably want to put in the graveyard. 
And Gear Hulk is nice. So I can just try and hit my land drops with opts and maybe just contempt Jace right now. Five cards in Graveyard, Toscanto's not too far from transforming. If we cast Opts, we could have a transform Toscanto next turn already, which would also give me land six for Gearhulk. Ooh, but a Nickel Bolas. Pluses. In exchange for eternal service. So Guess I'll Opts. Another Gearhulk. I mean, I don't want to exile my Gear Hulk. I'm just gonna try main phase Gear Hulk and then contempt Nicol Bolas. So I guess we'll put this on the bottom just to keep it in my library. And then exile Watergrave. And next turn I have to put this in the graveyard no matter what if I want to flip Ascanta. And we found another Gear Hulk, so that's nice. Main phase Gear Hulk, flashback contempt. And hope they don't have another Nicol Bolas here. Alright, well, we've got a flipped Ascanta, double Gear Hulk, so don't hate my position. Jace Mermage kick, that's fine. Our opponent's more of a tap out control deck or a flash draw go control deck. Typically, the instant speed control deck has the edge because they're not forced to tap out main phase for stuff. I'll take two here. Life total shouldn't matter too much, and maybe I need to Ascanta and cast whatever I draw into. With that, we will attempt to Gear Hulk. And then counter. There's Negate and Tails End in the graveyard, and my opponent scoops it up. Yeah, double Gear Hulk doing a lot of work here, and the Ascanta that my opponent didn't take early on also came back to maybe bite the opponent a little bit, but of course, Tails End would have been pretty good too. Sweet. So, yeah, blue black control. Not a bad way to build a control deck in Bus of One. Having access to all those one offs means that. If you're playing a matchup where one of those cards is bad, at least not all of them will be bad. And Thirst of Knowledge is a nice way to kind of bridge the gap and make sure you find the cards you need in certain matchups. And then Gear Hulk is a clean way to give you more answers as well as giving you a win condition all in one package. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.